Hello everyone and welcome to my Dragon Knight healer build for PvE and namely specific for main content. This is not a raiding this is not a raiding build where you're probably not gonna use it in trials since as you will see it's not optimized for it at all. This is the build I usually use when I just want to uh, get some easy keys, do the daily undaunted. Uh, usually I do a uh, random vet. It works pretty well and it uh, enables me to take care myself of most of the offensive buff the groups need without having to rely on a tank to actually provide them. So if you are in a more organized group and you don't do it like me who just does pack groups all day, um, this setup will then actually enable your tank a little bit more diversity, A, because he doesn't have to take Dragonite, he can just be a Necromancer or a Nightblade, really, it gives your tank more flexibility. Uh, there are some other sets that are very often required for form and content your tank will be able to swap off. But I will show you the specifics of the gear and the skills in a minute. So for the gear, as you'll see, I am on the front bar still wearing the perfected Master Resto. My um, setup is not golded because I have priority resources, like my PvP builds will always be golded first than my PvE builds, so yeah, this is not golded. You'll choose a little bit more if you have a golded uh, setup. But it's not that important, really. So, for the attributes, everything is into Magicka. Uh, I am playing as an Imperial, which is... I wouldn't really recommend if you want to do a um, competitive Dragon Knight healer. I'd rather recommend High Elf, Breton or even Argonian. I decided to go for Imperial mostly because of this, my upcoming PvP build. It's not over, it's not finished yet, so I won't go into details. But it serves its purpose and I played around a little bit to come up with my PvE build and it works very well. So Imperial works for me, definitely not the most uh, min-maxed, but I managed to squeeze some power from the nice unexpected passives. So for the setup, on the front bar, I am wearing, as usual, Perfected Master Resto. It's just so good, and you can play it in almost, almost all situations. It's one of these weapons, I guess, I just have a lot of problems swapping off. On the back bar, which uh, we are wearing the um, Inferno stuff of Powerful Assault with on charged with a fire enchantment. This is important due to the changes to Dragonite. Your uh, passes will give you back much more magicka when you apply the burning status effect, which is why the stuff is on charged with a fire enchantment to get these nice burns up. For the monster set, as you'll see, well, I am wearing Magma Incarnate on the head on heavy. All the enchants are Max Magica. Uh, traits are all divine for the body pieces. The head is heavy and the shoulder of Magma Incarnate is on medium just to get a little bit out of the Undaunted passive. I guess you could play potentially 7 light also since I'm an Imperial I have some extra health and some extra stam which I'll make great use of. But if you want to have a little bit more cost reduction and a better re region, you can play 7 light, but I'm just more comfortable on any heals for PvE to still... Like, it's a bit old school, but I still like one heavy and one medium. For the um, body set, we are wearing a spell power cure, which is pretty much bread and butter. You can find it in White Gold Tower. And... What it does pretty much is, when you overheal an ally, you give them major courage for 5 seconds, increasing their weapon and spell damage by 430. 
it uh, synergized very well with magma, which, as you know, when you heal a, um, a target, which is within 28 meters of you, with a single heal so rapid regen, you will give them uh, minor courage and minor resolve. Well, minor resolve is a little bit of a bonus, we don't really need it. What we after is minor courage. So just right now, you actually already stack two of the major offensive buffs that are required, which are namely minor, cur minor courage and major courage. Just, so just by yourself, you increase the overall weapon and spell power for with, by over 600 already. So as I said, the body pieces are all divine, maximum magicka. For the neck, for the jewelry, and on the back bar, we are wearing a uh, the rest of the powerful assault setup. Everything is on maximum magicka with magicka recovery enchant. You could, if you'd like, also swap out one enchant. I like to do it with the necklace for a cost reduction, but honestly, you don't really need since the changes to Cinderstorm. It's so cheap that you don't really need cost reduction anymore. And for the skills, on the front bar, we are wearing well, Combat Prior, which is pretty much your main spammable for the. Um, minor berserk uptime rapid regen it's gonna enable you to have nice uptime on magma and just it's, it's an amazing heal over time so there's no reason not to have it um illustrious healing is uh, tied to your master resto so it will enable you to give back some resources on the front bar and just like rapid regen it's, it's an amazing heal over time Cinderstorm has been changed to cost uh, 300, well for me as being an Imperial, 300 Magicka per second while it's up. So it makes the cost so much more bearable, it's really nice. I personally also like to put it in the middle of ad pulls, since um, you also remove the movement speed of enemies by 70%, so it helps the tank quite a lot to just keep the odds in check because everything will be slower and you can just pack them up nicely really. Cauterize is one of these skills, It's I mainly use it for the major prophecy and savagery. Um, what I like to do, or like an emergency oh shit heal, but I usually I just cast it and forget about it. And just recast it when I bar swap every 50 seconds. That's how I play with Cauterize. It's just a cast and forget for me at the moment. My ulti on the front bar is like usually a little bit of a flex. At the moment I'm playing with Standard of Might for the ad pulls. It helps a lot if your tank is not DK. And I just like putting down that banner just to show everyone I'm on EP. You could also potentially swap uh, for a barrier if it's needed. Like if you're doing more difficult content, hard modes. I've healed hard modes with the Stragonite healer, so it's definitely capable of. But you would have to adjust a few things also. Like standard of might is probably one of the first things you're gonna take off for barrier if you're doing more challenging content. But you can also just do it with standard of might really. On the back bar I'm having uh, Elemental Brocade, so Wall of Elements. It's gonna be the Fire Morph for this one since we're having a Fire Staff. Uh, the nice thing is I've, I've put the skills in the order of the cooldown and this is gonna be very important to keep up your buffs. As you'll see, Wall of Elements is 40 seconds cooldown, so you put it down and then you, you heavy attack. And by the time your heavy attack is over, you just Echoing Vigor which is uh, another nice heal over time uh, in the assault tree and it will enable you to proc your powerful assault. The only downside is it costs stamina and it has a 10 second duration so every 10 seconds you will lose more or less 3k stam. So in order to alleviate this cost I'm having as my uh, third skill, Fragmented Shield. 
it will do several things I really think are quite helpful. A, it's free access on major mending. Uh, B, it gives everyone a small shield, but it's not that consequential, really. But the interesting thing is, thanks to your Dragonite passive, I think it's helping hens. Where is it? Exactly. Helping hands when you cast a non-stamina ability from Earth and Heart, you restore 900 stam. So every time I'm pretty much casting either Fragmented Shield or Cinder Storm, which interests us as Fragmented Shield, I'm getting back 1k stamina, which, if you're thinking about it, it reduces, it alleviates the cost of vigor of Echoing Vigor. Uh, skills. We were at skills. Then my um, fourth skill is obviously Energy Orb. Like, it's just such a good AoE it, and it gives your allies back their resources. And our last skill is Engulfing Flame, so it's the, fa the pretty much the flame AoE that increases the damage, um, the damage f the L the enemies take from flame up to a maximum of 10%. So if you don't have any other Dragon Knight in your group, this is a huge buff. If you're playing with Templars or Sorcerers, for example, as DPS. This is gonna be quite a nice buff to their to their overall damage, because Templar has lots of uh, fire and magic damage. And on the back bar, obviously, we are playing with aggressive Warhorn, which will also, when you activate it, proc powerful assault. So pretty much, with powerful assault, you'd really just need any skill that comes from this tree. You can either have like Warhorn. I I take Echoing Vigor because I'm on a healer spec, obviously. You might also consider Caltrops. I considered Rapid uh, Rapid Maneuver also for the uh, added mobility, but the sustain is horrendous. It's just too expensive to sustain it uh, reliably. So Echoing Vigor is. For me, the obvious choice. For the passives, you can take... If you're playing on barrier on the front bar, don't forget to take Magicka 8 passives. For the added re uh, region. Uh, for my passives, since I'm playing on Imperial, I have an extra 2k health, an extra 2k stam, which is for this build quite useful. and the uh, reduced cost of all my abilities, including ultimate, magicka abilities, stamina abilities, blocking, roll dodging, but I'll go way more into detail when I release my Dragonite PvP build, because this passive is going to be very important to what I'm actually doing. Um, and I think I've overseen almost everything about the skills. So now for the champion points. Green you can pretty much take whatever you like really, except maybe liquid efficiency which makes it which uh, gives you 10% chance to not consume your potions. Ration is also nice because it makes your food last 10 minutes uh, longer. Um, from the brink is a bit of my, for the blue CP, it's a little bit of my safety net. I guess you could just replace this with something else, but I like to have it since I mostly do pickup groups. I never know what I will get. So I just like to have this just for big emergencies. So what it does is when one of my allies who stands in stupid gets under 25% health, I grant them a huge shield, which in return just enables me to heal them back. It saved me and 
my teammates from wiping quite a few times when I was doing a cauldron trifecta with my DK, so it's useful. Not m for most of the things, if you have a coordinated group and not do pick up things, I'd probably swap it out. But for what I'm doing, it's quite nice. Uh, the second is moving tide, increase your healing done with area effect, heals by 10% most of lots of our heals are area of effect if not all so there's no reason really not to take it swift renewal increases my healing done with feelings over time as said almost all my heals which are area of effect are also over heal over time so there's no reason not to take it arcane supremacy is a bit special to this build in particular at least to this race. Since I am um, Imperial, I do not have the juicy 2k max mag I would have if I would be High Elf or Breton. So for this build at least, in order to help with having a little bit more max mag, I just took the CP. This is, this is not mandatory. If you'd play on anything more meta than I do, you'd probably never take this and you'd take either the crit healing CP or another heal CP like single target or even the um, heal overflow that increases your regen when you overheal an ally instead of this but for the purpose of my build being imperial it's a nice addition I like having the extra um, max mag for the red CP this is a bit different from what I like usually play on PvE healers again. We are, we are playing with Bloody Renewal and what it does is I restore 300 stamina per stage whenever I kill a, whenever I kill an enemy. So pretty much every time an ad dies I get some stamina back and it makes the uptime for powerful assault easier. And this is not something I would take on anything else except this very particular build. I don't recommend it, it's pretty much useless on a healer. But as I said, this is a bit special out of the window, so it works very, very well with what I'm doing with it. The second CP is Celerity. Increase your movement by uh, a maximum of 10%. It's really nice. It's, an, it's a little bit of bonus when you need to have movement, moving around. It's just too nice not to have it. I feel like it's a standard, everyone just runs it. So if you don't, I feel like you're a, bit, a little bit behind. So I guess it's just one of my bread and butter CPs now. For the uh, fourth and uh, for the third and the fourth CP, both rely uh, around shields. So this one is a shield master. Reduce the cost of your damage shield by five uh, 10%. 2% per stage, 5 stages. This helps a lot also being able to spam uh, obsidian shield because it counts as a shield. It will also reduce the cost of my barrier if I need, uh, if I play with barrier. My barrier is going to be way cheaper. But mostly I have it to uh, help with the cost of spamming my obsidian shield. And then I have Expert Evasion, which gives me a free roll dodge for more difficult things and helps with keep up stamina. You could also potentially change this for the other barrier CP. Which is Bastion. If you want to rely a bit more on, sh on uh, barrier instead of uh, standard of might, you could potentially take off um, where is that there it is expert evasion for bastion just to have more powerful shields or if your stam region is just good and there's not many adds you can just take away bloody renewal but as I said, since I'm doing a lot of pugs, I just like having a little bit of an easier time managing my stam. 
Because pretty much what I do is I deplete a part of my mag to buff my heals and boost the group. I will also show you quickly the uptime and before I forget the food and the menders I almost overlapped this. The food is Bewitched um, Witch Mother's Potent Brew which gives us maximum health, maximum magicka and uh, almost 300 magicka recovery. And Munderstone is the Atronarch. Even more magicka recovery. Stats are not that bad as you'll see, even on Imperial I still manage to easily go over 2.3k um, magicka recovery. And still have a, tw a healthy 24k health, which is more than enough of what you need when you're doing dun uh, dungeons. So as I wanted to explain briefly about the, the uh, cooldowns. So usually when you go into fight, you do this, this and this most of the time before it starts. If it's an art group, I also like to do this. And then usually I start with Wall of Element, Heavy Attack, Powerful Assault. And if you pay attention, you'll see my buffs. By the time they run out, I can just bar swap and put it down again. Heavy Attack, Powerful Assault, another orb. And there you go, that's the rotation as much as the rotation it can have. The heavy attack between the wall of elements and powerful assault is not mandatory. You can just squeeze it in when you need a bit of uh, magicka every now and then. You can also absolutely not place the heavy and just put, make sure your powerful assault doesn't run out. But as you see, the cool I place the skills in an order that makes my cooldowns are pretty tight. But if everything is stacked up nicely by the tank, your DPS are just gonna have a good time because everything will melt. So yeah, and that's it for my PvE Dragonite build, I guess. So tell me if you enjoy this kind of uh, build videos. If would, if you would like to see more, I am still testing my uh, PvP build. I will release it. No worries. It's just it takes more time because I want to adjust every little nitty gritty detail and then explain properly how it's functioning. So thank you for your patience, I hope this was enjoyable and a bit different. I'll also include at the end of this video some gameplay footage. Um, the skills will be different from this because I was still testing out skills and trying to figure out the best order and the and how to get the most value out of this build. So the skills will not be the same, but the effect and the concept behind, this, behind it is exactly the same. It will give you also a nice view on like how I'm drag, like how I'm using Dragonite heals. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and see you soon. Oh fuck, I'm not- I need to swap skills. Okay, I guess I'm not gonna swap skills. I don't have barrier. We will need barrier here.
the shop.